Thanks for checking out this unboxing video. This is the January Snacku. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've actually put any sort of uh, video up, but been kind of busy. Um, Snacku, January. Uh, just so you know, I'm going to open it and show you as I usually do. And there's no tissue paper in there currently. There usually is, and there was, but my cat was circling around down here and just like whining and complaining because she's not getting attention. So I was just like, let me throw this tissue paper at her to keep her occupied, hopefully for the duration of this. So if you hear crinkling in the background, it's her playing with the tissue paper. Uh, if you hear her whining in the background, it's her complaining because she's not getting attention. That's how she is. She's a needy cat. Anyway, so this is a January Snacku, and the theme is Kyoto, I believe. Uh, it says here, Kyoto served as Japan's capital and the emperor's residence from 794 until 1868. Uh, over the centuries, Kyoto was destroyed by many wars and fires, but due to its exceptional historic value, the city was spared from the destruction of World War II. Countless temples, shrines, and other historically priceless structures survive in the city today. Kyoto is also where you can trace the origin of matcha back to the 800s, when Buddhist monks first planted tea leaves around the Uji Kyoto region. Today, that same region of Uji Kyoto is considered to produce some of the best green tea in the world. This month, we feature a variety of snacks from Kyoto's historic shops. So if you want to know ahead of time what we're getting to, there it is. You can, you know, freeze frame on that and read it. And there's the artwork, as usual, looking nice, looking traditional in this sense, in this instance, because of an older town or city, province, prefecture, whatever, uh, Kyoto. So let's get started. Uh, I'll just go with the first thing on top, and these kind of look like a little bit like mini eclairs. I believe these are the yes, Kanako bites. Kanako is a type of roasted soybean flour that has been used for hundreds of years in Japan. It's made by finely grinding roasted yellow soybeans and has a nutty yet slightly sweet taste. We've got, uh, you've got to visit the Shugetsu snack shop located in the historic Gion district of Kyoto next time you go to Japan. Their snacks are super delicious. So, okay, so this is the packaging. Um, and disclaimer, I don't really know Japanese. I'm doing my best at pronunciation, so sorry. All right, so this, I mean, let me get like a full size one. There's like a half, I got my little. Yeah, it kind of looks like a mini donut or like a mini eclair and it's just like bready and it's sugary. It smells fried, a little I guess that's a soybean, but it kind of smells potato-y, like starchy potato-y to me. A little bit of sweetness, a little salty. Mmm. Mmm. It's got a nice crunch to it. It's very light and fluffy. I mean, it looks like styrofoam. It kind of, the way you go through it, it's just like super light. It is kind of like styrofoam. Um, I guess it's a soybean, but it comes off a little corn-like in the flavor. There's a, a, a sugary sweetness. There's a little bit of a saltiness. Um, hmm. It kind of melts. If you didn't start chewing it immediately and you just leave it on your tongue, it would just melt away. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not huge on it. The thing is, it's so light and airy that it's almost like it's not really there. So... For the right person, it's fine for me. I'm looking for a little more substance to it. But it's interesting, and I'm glad that I've now tried this. Drink some water. Get a good rinse before the next one. Okay, moving on. Uh, this is... Onori Senbai. Okay. Mild puff baked rice cracker topped with a light sugar glaze and topped with powdered nori seaweed. I'm hit and miss with uh, with seaweed, so we'll see how this goes. Oh, first show you the packaging. There's really not much. I mean, there's no like words or anything. Eh, there's a little bit of words on the packaging. Kanji, I think it is. Ugh. 
sorry. My uh, opening skills today, not the best. As you can see, the powdered seaweed is very easy to see. The other side's just like a biscuit cookie. Pretty thick. Yeah. Yeah, you can smell the seaweed. It also smells a tad bit salty, though. Which, you know, send by. That kind of happens. Real nice crunch. It's real crispy and crunchy on the outside, but it gives way on the inside. So it's a little more soft. Decently airy. It's pretty sweet, actually. Very sugary. I get a little bit of the seaweed flavor, but with the sweetness in the seaweed, it almost tastes a little bit like matcha, actually. So, this one's okay. It's mainly sweetness that drives this with a little bit of that like vegetal earthy seaweed and, and matcha kind of flavor. That's another one that I'm like, that's okay. Once again, glad I tried it. Not huge on it. Oh no, cat might be coming. I might have to eject her during the video at some point because she'll probably make her way over here. Oh, or she's going to play with the car. She likes to just keep knocking off things. Anyway, that's another one of those. Move all my duplicates over. Oh, got three of those. Okay. Next is, I think I know what this is, but I might have to open it. So let me show you the packaging first. Whoop. There you go. There you go. So I think it's the matcha bomb roll. Oh, cat's going to be behind me, actually. Yes, that is what it is. The matcha bomb roll. Um, the Muromachi period of Japan, 14th to 15th century, was when tea culture was popularized in Japan. And with the advent of tea ceremonies, confectionaries that would be eaten alongside the tea began to increase in popularity. Meidasika was founded in 1924 to keep this tradition alive, and the shop is now one of the most influential snack stores in all of Kyoto. Interesting. Oh, she's not here. She's going to lay down. Anyway, so this kind of, I mean, I'm trying to figure out what this looks like. It's, it's, the, it's a roll. I mean, legit, it kind of looks a little bit like a, um, like a cake roll, but like a, kind of a mix between a cake roll and a combo, you know, like, like pretzel, like crispy combos with like stuff inside. Obviously you can see like that matcha kind of like cream on the inside. It looks very like cakey though. It feels kind of soft on the outside. Oh, it smells really sweet, sugary. Mmm. That's a really, that's a really nice cake. Mmm. Sugary, kind of vanilla-y, um, that cream on the inside. I don't know that I'm really so much tasting like matcha in that cream. It's just like vanilla-y, almost a little like buttercream-ish. Uh, that's nice. Mm. Mm. Oh, this is a winner. That's, look at that. Mm. The cake. That, that, like, cake roll on the outside, that is really good. And this is the thing, like, I'm more into the savory, but I do like some sweet here and there. That's sweet, but it's not, like, crazy sweet. It's, like, the right amount of sweetness for me. That's really good. I like that a lot. And I don't really taste the matcha. I, I mean, like, the slightest little bit if you're reaching for it to try and get to it. But if someone didn't tell you what was in it and didn't tell you it was matcha and you were just eating it, you'd just be like, oh, it's like vanilla. So, that taste, that is awesome. Like, that creaminess, that cake, that sweetness. Oh. Good job, Snacku. That one is a, is a big-time winner for me. Okay, I got... I only have one of those. I wish I had more of those. Okay, next. I think... Which one is this? I'm gonna have to... This is another one I'm gonna have to open it just to make sure that I can tell you what it is properly. Let me see a little silica packet in there to keep keep it fresh. Oh man, this is this packaging is like friggin' impossible. Man, this is tough pack. Ooh, what is this? Jesus, 
That's hard as hell to open. I don't want to like break a sweat. Oh man, this is so soft. Let me get this. Now I need to get the silica packet to come off of the back of this. That is kind of stuck to the wrapper. Okay. That taken care of. Uh, this is Gachamon. I mean, it's very, it's like super cakey people. It looks like there's like a slight greenish tinge to it, maybe. I mean, by the like dark coloration right here, it reads me, leads me to believe there might be like some red bean paste in there. Gachamon. Jiro Kimura was born in 1897 and founded the now famous Kyoto snack store. Choju. Shoten. Choju Shoten. Back in the early 1900s. When he first opened his shop, he made each snack by hand one at a time. Even to this day, every single one of the snacks are made the same way he originally used to make it. Oh, wow. Okay. And I believe there's Azuki bean. Well, it doesn't have much of a smell. It actually smells a little bit like a corn muffin. But it's not like a super strong scent. Like a low-level sweetness. The, the like, cake on the outside is a little chewy, actually. Which, eh, a little tough at the same time. A little chewy, a little tough. And yeah, and it's kind of just like a red bean paste on the inside. You can see. It's like a red bean paste. Yeah. Which, you know, it's got that particular consistency. It's not for everyone. I'm fine with red bean paste. Um, it's sweet, but it's not like crazy sweet. It's kind of like this low-level sweetness. Mm. I'm sorry. If my HVAC system kicked on in the back background and you could hear it, I apologize for that. That's pretty good, but you have to be a fan of red bean paste. If you're not, you're definitely going to dislike that because it's mainly just red bean paste driven. Like, that's pretty much all you taste, so just know that going in. Like, I don't know if people will be able to get their hands on this, but, you know, just saying. If you do, be aware. All right, rinse. Next. I have an extra one of those. Set that aside. All right. There's yet another one. Oh, I think, uh, yeah, this is another one. I think I know what this is as well, but I'm going to have to show you first and then figure it out. I'll open it up. Hopefully this opens a lot easier than the last one because that was a pain. Oh, this is interesting. It's like wrapped inside. It's kind of like wrapped like a street food burrito, kind of, which is funny. It's like wrapped in foil. This is a freshness thing. It's literally wrapped in aluminum foil. That's interesting. I've, I've never experienced that before. A product like this just being wrapped in aluminum foil inside the packaging. Okay, so this doesn't look appetizing. It actually looks pretty gross. But, because it's, it's just like green. It's like brown and green together, which is like the most ugliest form of green to be honest, but, um, oh, whew, matcha, you can smell so much matcha with this, it is crazy, I'm, the cat's just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> the light's probably throwing her off, she doesn't understand it, but, um, yeah, so much matcha smell, that's pretty much all I smell, it's like vegetal, earthy matcha, oh, whoop, I just realized I didn't read what it is, I'm sorry, I'll read that first. A del it's matcha azuki cake roll. A deliciously soft cake made from hand-picked tea leaves from Uji Kyoto, filled with chunky su subuan azuki beans, the perfect afternoon snack. So, it actually tastes similar to the gachamon, but it's like a ton of matcha. The matcha really hits you. And it, it does taste good, though. Like, I, I know I said I'm, like, hit and miss with matcha, but it adds in a nice way to this. It's very light. It is very, like, moist and cakey. And that softness is really nice. I really like that. And then you get to the middle where it's that bean paste, and it's, like, a low-level sweetness. So, like, 
all the matcha flavors on the outside and then a low level low level bean sweetness on the inside. It doesn't seem that exciting or that great, but it goes together really well and it's kind of like an easy snack. Like the flavors aren't crazy, but it's good flavor. So it's just kind of like you could not pay too much attention to this and eat it. Um, you have to be good with matcha though. Like I was saying, it's a lot of matcha, but I'm hit and miss with matcha and the way this is integrated into this snack, I think it works really well. I, l I like it quite a bit. So that's another winner. It just smells like so much matcha. It's crazy. I was not expecting to really like that based off what it was, but it's good. That's why it's important to just try things. You know, this is something I preach on my uh, craft beer podcast that I have. It's called Brutal Battle. If anyone wants to check it out, B-R-E-W-T-A-L, Battle. Um, you can find it everywhere, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Google Play, all that. But just keep trying things because you never know. Like you may think like that. I was like, I don't think I, I don't think I would like that. So I wouldn't buy that. But since it's in this box, I'm trying it and I'm like, oh, I actually do like that. So now if I would have the opportunity, I might buy it again. So anyway, try things. That's the lesson. All right, next. Sorry, these videos go long, but they sent a lot of snacks. It's a good problem to have, to be honest. So I think we got another send by here, which always excites me. Because if you've been watching all these videos, I've said I really like senbai. Senbai is very, very nice. So this is the Kyoto Soy Senbai. Oh, that sounds so good. I love soy too. A simple yet delicious baked rice cracker glazed with natural homemade soy sauce by the Shugetsu Snack Store. Oh, I'm excited for this one. I anticipate this being my favorite thus far. And looking at everything else, potentially my favorite overall. Alright, let me take this out. Oh, man. Senbai has such an, int well, especially this type of Senbai has such an interesting texture to me. Like, look at this. It's just so, like, it kind of looks like a thick hash brown, in a way. See? That's thick. It's got, like, nice glaze. Oh, God. So, the smell, it's like a mixture of, like, the fried aspect of it, like, fry oil and soy sauce and salt. And, like, I know to some people that'll sound kind of, like, gross, but to me, it's, it's like, mouth-watering, that scent. It smells so good. Mmm. That crunch, dude. Oh, my gosh. Oh. This is so good. Yeah, this is what I... This is even better than I expected, to be honest. Like, I was... Oh, man. Being a fan of Senbai, you get a sweetness up front. It's, like, sweet, then it gets salty, then you taste that fried portion of it. You're tasting the fried oil. And it's so crunchy. Mmm. Oh. It's like perfection as far as a mixture of sweet and salty. And then that crunchy. Like, I'm big on textures. I like certain textures. I always like crunch. I love savory. I like a little bit of sweetness added to it. So this, for me, is like snacking perfection. Look at this. Oh, God. All right, I'm not going to eat more of it. I want, I want to eat that whole thing right now, to be honest, because it's so good. That's my perfect snack. If I could just have that all the time. Oh, God, I would. That's so good. Thank you, Snacku. The Kyoto Soy Senbai. Mm. I like this box. I have another one. Thank goodness. Like, there are certain things where I'm just like, oh, I have another one of those. Eh. And then there are ones where I'm like, I have another one of those. I wish I had more. That's one of those. Anyway, moving on. There's something small. The, okay, this would be the, okay, Yatsu Hashi. These simple crackers have been made by various shops in Kyoto for hundreds of years. They are in the shape of traditional Japanese roof tiles and have a subtle sweetness to them. Definitely enjoy them with some tea or ice cream. So they look kind of like a, like a vanilla, vanilla-ish wafer cookie. Sorry, I got to get the senbai out of my mouth. Not that I really want to. As soon as I'm done with this recording, I'm destroying that thing, demolishing. I don't even think my wife's going to want to taste it so much. 
Anyway, all right, so here we go. So here it is. Does it look like a roof tile? It does. Yep. I mean, it just kind of looks like, everyone's had something kind of like this before, like some sort of like vanilla-ish wafer. Ooh, it actually smells like cinnamon, though. Doesn't say anything about cinnamon? No. It says it's rice, wheat, sugar, and salt. It smells cinnamony, though. Sweet, cinnamony. Mm. Oh. Do you hear how crunchy that is? I'm sure it's making it on there. That was like an extreme crunch. Yeah. And it like totally tastes like cinnamon. Mm. Honestly, it reminds me a little bit of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, the cereal. That's a good comparison. Although, not as sugary as Cinnamon Toast Crunch. As cinnamony as Cinnamon Toast Crunch and, you know, having the crunch. I eat those roof tiles. That's good. Sorry, I don't know if the crunching is now annoying, but I'd eat that whole thing. It was good. The sweetness is not crazy, though. Once again, it's another one of these snacks where, like, the sweetness is, like, kind of medium. That cinnamony note is the star of it, and I'm also kind of hit or miss with cinnamon based on the level of it. It's enough that it's, like, it's definitely there and it's the star, but it's not annoying. It's not too much. It's kind of good. I think my wife's actually going to really like that. I've asked her, by the way, about being on these videos, and she was like, mm, but I like trying all the snacks afterward. And she does. She really has fun with it. She just doesn't want to be on the video. So maybe that'll change in the future. I don't know. Probably not. Okay. I think this is the, oh, third to last. This is matcha waffle. We've had some things kind of like this in the past. One of my Maya Dasica's, Maya Dasica's, sorry, most popular snacks are these thin waffle cookie sandwiches filled with matcha chocolate cream. Okay, I just made an assumption in my head that it would probably be vanilla, but it is not going to be vanilla. And honestly, I you know, I've had some of this, like, kind of matcha cream, matcha filling. I've had some of those things in the past, and it, but it's always been, like, a matcha and vanilla or, like, matcha white chocolate. So this is interesting. There you go. Looks like a waffle. Very green on the inside. It smells like a waffle. Real sugary. Mm. Hmm. No. So, I taste the matcha a little bit. It's tasting like kind of a light vegetal note. And then I get the chocolate kicking in right after it. Now that nice, like, typical kind of, like, waffle cone flavor. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the chocolate's kind of light. It's kind of like a, like a cocoa-type chocolate. It's pretty good. I like that. I like the crunch to it, once again. As people can tell, I'm a texture guy. I like crunchy. It's awesome. Okay. Oh, yeah, some of these. We had something kind of like this recently. That's good. Um, these are corn bisque french fries. Baked and dehydrated french fries covered in sweet corn powder. I don't know about the corn powder aspect, but... I had something like this in... I don't remember if it was the last box or the box before that. But it was like these fries but wasabi flavored I believe open at the top because I only have one of these and I don't want to eat it all so if I can open it at the top then I can like reclose it come on man it's a lot to go through for that though okay here we go got it got it oh then these are like small the ones we had before are like kind of big these are Actually tiny. These are kind of like matchstick sized potatoes. These things exist in the US, but not with the corn. That's kind of weird. Because at first it tastes a little bit salty, a little sweet. 
and I'm getting the flavor of potato and corn at the same time, which is odd because I'm not used to having the flavor of corn and the flavor of potato at the same time. So it's kind of weird. But the corn's up front mainly, and then it ends up going away, and the potato lingers. Once again, real crunchy, though. The corn aspect of it's tasting a little odd to me, but I can get past it because that potato kicks in kind of fast. So overall, I like it. I don't need the corn aspect, though. Just give me these straight up without the corn powder, and I'm... I'm much better, but I'll eat them. I like them. I don't think my wife's going to be into it. Not her thing. I think I just have one more thing now. This has been long for anyone who has stuck through this. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, and the last thing is sometimes they throw in, like, very small things like this, which is fine. I like to try it all, but strawberry milk candy. Had something kind of similar to this in the past. Uh, Japan's most popular milk soft candy made with real strawberries from Fukuoka, Japan. I mean, there's not really much to see in the packaging. But, um, there's like some flowers on there. And some strawberries. Excuse me. Uh, so my first experience with like a milk candy was with this snacku box. And I was like, I don't know, that seems kind of weird. But then when I tried it, it was kind of like caramelly in a sense, which makes sense. But, ooh, it smells so strawberry -y. Look at that. Half white, half pink, reddish pinkish. Mm. Oh, mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's sugary as you would assume from something like this. A decent strawberry to it. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing is, I'm sorry, I'm just setting it aside for now so I can talk better. But the nice thing about that with these types of candies is I feel like the milky aspect of it brings that kind of sugariness down because it gives it an extra creaminess. Oh, sorry, I gotta keep this from going on saver so I can see myself. Um, yeah, it, like, adds a creaminess to it, which I think helps bring that kind of, like, sugar perception down a little bit. And that helps the, the strawberry kind of shine more, which I like about that. But also, the strawberry does taste real. It tastes like actual strawberry. It doesn't taste like artificial strawberry f flavoring like you'd get with something like a strawberry Starburst or, like, a strawberry Laffy Taffy or anything like that in the United States. So, I like that. It's kind of refreshing. Um, okay, so that's the end of it. Uh, in summation, what were my favorites? Uh, overall, there weren't that many that I disliked. The Senbai, as people could tell, that Kyoto Soy Senbai was by far my favorite. It was really, really tasty. Um, other than that, that Matcha Bomb Roll, these, this thing, really surprised me. And I really did like that. I'm going to enjoy eating more of that one. Um, other than that, the other favorite is that Matcha Azuki Cake Roll, which I really... This thing, the, the one that I was like, man, that looks gross, but it tastes really good. Um, all of them, for the most part, I'm going to enjoy eating. Those Kanako, these ones, the the, the like Kanako bites, eh, they're kind of like throwaway. I don't really need a whole lot of them, but I'll eat them. You know, you can really ignore those. Those with some beer would probably be fine. Uh, and the same thing with the uh, Nori um, Senbai down there. Those were also kind of meh. But, um, yeah, good box. Uh, like, like you can probably tell, I just like trying new things. And even though I don't like it, the fact that I can check that box and say, okay, but I've tried it. So, it's always good. Anyway, thank you everyone for checking this out. I really do appreciate it. I'm pushing like a half an hour. If you could do me a favor, since you stuck with me this long, it's a half hour of my life. If you could just hit the subscribe, I would really appreciate that because I do like doing these videos, but I want to be able to keep doing them and know that I've got an audience out there who really wants to see them. Um, also, you can hit the notification bell if you want to know every time that I put up a new um, a new video. Also, if you have recommendations, uh, email me at brutalbattlepodcast at gmail.com or put a comment down here. We can also con You can also comment and we can just talk about like snacks, about pop culture stuff, horror stuff, whatever you want. I'm cool with that. And thumbs ups are fine if you want to. But the subscribe, that's a big one. doesn't take you long. 
and it can mean a lot to me. I appreciate it. Uh, everyone, hope you're having a great week, even though it's just starting. But until next time, keep it brutal.